The Leica Q2 was announced today. It is an exciting step forward from the Q, which was launched four years ago. I had the pleasure of using the Q2 for a, about a week. And in this video, I will share some technical specifications of the Q2. I will share my experience with it, and I will share photos and video I captured with it. I know from my review of the original Q that there are some Leica Q devotees out there. So prepare yourselves because Leica took what was already great about the Q and took a big step forward. Let's start with the basics. Like the Q before it, the Q2 is a full frame fixed focal length camera intended to be something that you can pick up for your everyday adventures. It has a few tricks up its sleeve, but it is intentionally simple so that you can stay in the moment of whatever it is that you are experiencing, but you can rest easy in knowing that you are capturing high quality images. It really excels as a set it and forget it camera or even as a mostly set it and forget it camera. All right, let's dive into some specifications and my thoughts on them. I already mentioned that the Q2 is a full frame fixed focal length camera. And that fixed lens is this Sumilux 28 millimeter F1.7 beauty. This lens does have optical image stabilization and you can see that there are controls on the lens itself, which I will get to in a moment. As you would expect, if you've taken any photos with a Leica lens, the images coming out of this are stellar, crisp and clean and beautiful. And with the capability of opening up to F1.7, you are allowing in a ton of light and you're also able to really play with depth of field effects. If you want a super shallow depth of field, you can definitely do it with this camera. Now, while this lens is fixed, you do have three options for digital zoom here, 35 millimeters, 50 millimeters, and 75 millimeters. And that is made possible by the 47 megapixel sensor. <laughs> That's just about double what you had on the original Q. So you have a lot to work with and you can still get completely acceptable images using the digital zoom. At the 35 millimeter zoom, you retain a 30 megapixel image. And even at 75 millimeters, you retain about seven megapixels. You certainly won't be using the 75 millimeter digital zoom for every shot, but it's nice to know that it's there if you want it. And incidentally, if you are shooting raw, the Q2 is still taking the full photo and you will be able to access it in post-processing software. I myself found that I used the digital zoom sometimes because it did help me visualize what that final image would look like. Okay, moving on, but still on the topic of the sensor. We certainly don't wanna gloss over this sensor. <laughs> the Q2 has 13 stops of dynamic range with an available ISO range of 50 to 50,000. <laughs> this means that I can take photos in low light situations, in difficult lighting situations, like when I was at the Grand Canyon on a sunny afternoon. The flexibility is there to edit photos later on to bring out details in shadow and light. And then along with the Stellar sensor comes a faster processor. That allows the Q2 to focus very quickly. They say it focuses in 0.15 seconds, and I didn't time it, but I can say that it is noticeably faster than the Q. It is contrast detect only autofocus, but I didn't have any issues with autofocus. My ultimate test of autofocus on any camera is at the Grand Canyon during sunrise or sunset, when the canyon walls way across the way are all in shades of blue and washed out. In this very difficult low contrast situation, the Leica did a touch of hunting, but it did lock on every time. I was really impressed with its autofocus in low light as well. As long as there's some contrast, it's super snappy. And this faster processor and autofocus capability has implications for video as well. So let's talk about that. The Q2 can shoot video in 4K at up to 30 frames per second. There are a variety of other options though, including 1080p at 60 frames per second. I chose to shoot in 4K 30. I was impressed with the autofocus during video, particularly how quickly it focused and also how smoothly it focused. And that's really the thing that I have come to expect with Leica. There is always an elegance to the way the camera does anything. One tip though, that is 
you do need to use a fast memory card that will keep up with the camera. A UHS-2 SD card is recommended. Backtracking a bit to the lens and the camera body. It is an all metal beauty of a camera. It also has some weight to it, but it is well balanced with the lens and it's comfortable to use. Even though there isn't a big grip on it, it's a sleek body and I found it easy to hold on to because there is texture on the body. Also, I was always using two hands because of the layout of the controls. And the controls are my favorite thing about this camera, aside from taking beautiful photos, I suppose. <laughs> the controls are wonderfully tangible. Leica really gets industrial design, as they always have. The aperture adjustment is on the lens and the shutter speed is on the top of the camera. You have a configurable button here as well that I had set to ISO sensitivity. Now, if you truly wanna set it and forget it type of experience, you can set all three of those things, aperture, shutter speed, and ISO to auto and have the camera make all of the settings decisions. However, I typically had it set to auto for shutter speed and for ISO and adjusted my aperture with the ring on the lens. This effectively is aperture priority with auto ISO. That's the sort of set it and forget it way to use the camera that I mentioned earlier. But of course you can set each of those three variables individually if you want to and just be in kind of a manual mode. So I pointed out the button I had set to ISO sensitivity. There are a couple of other buttons and dials that you can customize. There is a dial on the top that I had set to exposure compensation, and that was handy because I was in aperture priority with auto ISO, but sometimes in the more challenging lighting situations, I wanted to nudge exposure one way or the other. There's also the function button on the back of the camera, which you can set however you want. If I were to use the camera for a longer period of time, I think I would change it to an autofocus option so that I could switch that around quickly. But that's the point of this camera. The simplicity while still maintaining flexibility. There aren't a lot of buttons and dials on the body, but you can make the camera behave how you want it to, and you have access to the things that you use the most often. And if you don't set it on the body, you have the favorites menu that you can access to make quick settings changes without scrolling through the entire menu. Heading back to the lens, there are a couple more cool things here. One is that you can press a button and be in manual focus. The camera does have focus peaking too, which is helpful, but the trick up the Q2 sleeve that I love is the macro option. With a twist of a ring on the lens, you are in macro mode and you can get super duper close up. Like the digital zoom, it isn't something that I use often, but when the opportunity presented itself, I was really glad to have the feature. Okay, last thing about the body. It's weather sealed. Yay! <laughs> the technical terms are that it has an IP52 rating and it's protected from dust and falling water drops when the camera is tilted by 15 degrees. <laughs> Basically, <laughs> that means that you can take it out if there's a little bit of weather. You can't dunk it in a swimming pool, but if there's a little bit of rain or snow, or if you want to film some melting snow coming off of a roof, you can without worrying about the camera dying. All right, I will put a few more specifications up here on the screen right now, but basically the Q2 has the Leica build quality and image quality that you would expect. It has some impressive individual specifications, but how they are all put together and how the camera handles is really the important part. They've managed to increase the battery life on this guy even. Okay, so I took a lot of photos and video with the Q2. <laughs> Take a look, and then I will come back and chat a bit more about the camera.
I truly enjoyed using the Q2, whether it was a day at the museum or a day at the Grand Canyon. When I spoke to the Leica folks about this camera, they said that the Q and now the Q2 were meant to balance three things, quality, compactness, and speed. And I think with the Q2, they've really met that goal. Often when I borrow gear and I'm packing it up to send it back, I think, oh, bummer. <laughs> but when I packed away the Q2, I thought, oh, bummer. <laughs> It was the tangible controls, the compact package, and the flexibility when I want it, and the oh-so-high quality images that really did it for me. But who else might like this camera? The Q2 can certainly be for someone who knows next to nothing about the technicals of photography. They just know that they want stellar images. This camera could be great for that person because you truly can set it and forget it. The camera will just take care of you and you will get high quality photos. But this camera might also be for someone like me. Like many of you, I am deep into the technicals of photography. I have a number of interchangeable lens cameras and a whole slew of lenses to choose from. And I love them. I work with them every single day. But sometimes I like to shake things up to Grab a simpler setup where I still feel like I have a good amount of control when I want it, and I'm still gonna get the same kind of results that I am with my larger camera setups. I know it's a tall order, but there was a certain kind of relaxation for me and a way to enjoy photography and what I'm doing when I used the Q2. Even though I knew I was borrowing it for a limited time and would have to send it back, it was still a really enjoyable experience. Now, the last thing to touch on is price. We all know that along with the Leica build quality and image quality, along with the Leica look and feel is the Leica price. As I film this video, the Q2 is just under $5,000 in the US, but there is a link in the description of this video for you to see how much it is when and where you're watching this. It's available today too, so if you like it, you should probably order fast. That's all I have for you today. Thank you so much to Leica for allowing me to borrow this Q2. This camera is all of what the Q was and more and better. <laughs> I truly enjoyed my time with it, and I would love to know what you all think. Do you have a Q, or have you thought about it? Does the Q2 tempt you? Let me know in the comments, and thank you for watching.